chapter 1, we'll start reading in verse 26. When you found your place, will you stand with me for the reading of the Word of God? <clears throat> Luke chapter 1, verse 26 says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Then the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray. Dear Father, we bow before you once again. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you for loving us first. We thank you for loving us so much that you gave your son, that you condescended to this level to our level, that you became flesh and, and walked among men, that you became a man, a perfect man, a sinless man, God, man. You went to the cross of Calvary on our behalf, died with the full weight of our sin, rose again victorious the third day. We thank you for all of that. We thank you for forgiveness and salvation. We thank you that our minds this time of year are made to uh, reflect on Jesus and what he's done. I just ask for your help today to preach Jesus. Forgive me of any sins and failures. Forgive us, God, of any sins and failures. Focus our minds and our thoughts on your word, on what you have to say to us, and on our response to the Holy Spirit as he convicts and draws. Again, I ask for your help to preach Jesus. Let us lift Jesus up that folks might be drawn unto him. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Last week, we saw that man violated a sacred trust and fell into sin. At that time, God promised man that there would come one who would defeat evil and deliver humanity. For thousands of years, man waited. All the while, God worked. God worked by choosing a man named Abram from Ur of the Chaldees. Through this man, God raised up a nation he called Israel. God worked through this nation to establish his law and his worship in the earth. God worked because he was completing a plan that had begun before the foundation of the world. God worked because he was determined to send a redeemer to this world to save lost Mankind. He worked because he was motivated by a heart of love to see his people saved. So God kept on because he had promised to send a lamb to this world to die for sin. Today I want to talk about the part of God's work that brought his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into this world. All of the obstacles God faced in completing His plan to save sinners, the most challenging, from a human perspective, was getting His Lamb into this world. 
How is it that God was going to become flesh so that he could die for mankind? You see, a bull couldn't do it. A, a, a lamb couldn't do it. It had to be a man, die for man. But it couldn't just be an ordinary man. He could only die for one man, for himself. It had to be an infinite man. So how was God going to accomplish this? Well, it's found right here in our story, isn't it? See, first of all, he had to come through a pure vessel. We're told here that the angel came to a virgin. A virgin whose name was Mary. The word used here to refer to a female that is sexually pure. The fact that the virginity of Mary is affirmed twice in verse 27 alone tells us that it is an important truth. It's fundamental. See, contrary to liberals and many that teach that, well, the wording simply means a young maid. No, no. The wording means a young woman who has never engaged in sexual intercourse. That's what the wording means. It means a virgin. This womb of Mary was pure in that she had never been with a man. The vessel God chose to bring His Son into this world was a pure vessel. Now some might wonder why that's so important that I spend so much time stressing that. It's important because God promised that the Savior of humanity would be the seed of the woman. Remember last week, Genesis 3.15? This simply means that God would send His Savior into this world through the body of a woman without the aid of a man. That's important because all humans are sinners and that sinfulness is passed on through the seed of the man. You read Romans chapter 5, particularly verse 12. When Adam sinned in the garden, he became a sinner. And just as he passed on his human nature to his offspring, he passed on his sin nature to his offspring. They, we, inherited the sin of Adam, it has been passed down the line. The commentary in my study Bible says, one of the historic fundamentals of the faith is the virgin birth of Christ. It begins with the supernatural conception of Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary without the seed of a man. The miraculous birth is verified by the statement that she was a virgin when she uh, gave birth to Christ. Matthew chapter 1. By means of the virgin birth, Jesus had the human nature of his mother and the sinless divine nature of his father because his father was God himself. She's told that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. God. In the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and you will conceive and bear this son. God's plan to send a Savior into the world involved him sending a pure Savior. Therefore, he must come through a pure vessel. God, uh, he, Jesus, would not inherit the sinful nature of humanity. He would, however, inherit a physical body, a human nature. God accomplished this through the virgin birth of Jesus. By sending Jesus into the world through the womb of a virgin, God was able to give His Son a human body and a human nature without His inheriting a fallen nature, a sinful nature. This enabled Jesus to be born without sin, to live without sin, and to die. The only reason He died with sin is because He died with my sin and your sin. He took it willingly upon Himself and paid our just price. He went to Calvary and endured the wrath of God upon your sin and my sin. That's the only reason He had sin when He died. He was able to satisfy God's wrath upon sin forever 
by offering his own body and his own blood on the cross of Calvary because he was sinless, he was pure, he was perfect. Now I certainly do not understand all the mechanics of how God sent his son into this world through the womb of a virgin. But I do know that the virgin birth of Jesus is a fundamental doctrine to the Christian faith. Without the virgin birth, we do not have a Savior. Without the virgin birth, we have no hope. Without the virgin birth, we have no foundation upon which to build our house of faith. To deny the virgin birth of Jesus is to deny Christ himself. To watch Mary as these verses unfold is to see a young woman who has been prepared for this moment. Did you know my grandson is five? Well, he just turned five. Do you know that from, I guess, his birth, I've been praying God prepare his little heart and mind now that when he reaches the age of accountability, he'll be ready to receive the Savior. And I believe God can do that. I believe He works in advance of His revealed plan. And I believe He worked in advance of His revealed plan in the life of Mary to prepare a young woman who was ready for this moment when she was confronted with it. When she was told, Mary, you're the one. Her, her, she had some questions. She didn't understand. But she said, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me as, as the Lord pleases. She said, I'm ready to take on this plan. History tells us that every faithful Jewish girl hoped that she would be the vessel chosen through which God would send His Messiah into this world. I think that was the hope of the young Jewish girls, the young Jewish women, that they may be the vessel. When the angel appears to Mary, she is amazed and she is startled, but she is a woman prepared to respond to the will of God in faith and faithfulness. It appears that God in His grace had begun a work in her young heart long before this moment. So that when this moment arrived, Mary was ready and willing to do as the Lord desired for her. Imagine the faith required for Mary to respond to the Lord as she did. For a young unmarried woman to become pregnant in that day was not only she would be the focus of shame and disgrace, but do you realize it could have meant death? She was to be stoned to death. Mary was willing to bear the shame and to bear the burden of being the vessel through which God would send His Son into this world. God had, begin, had begun preparing her long before this moment, hadn't He? Thank God for people like Mary who are willing to do all that the Lord requires regardless of what it may require them. May the Lord find a heart like that beating within every one of our chests today. After all, nothing reveals our love for Jesus like our unquestioning obedience to His request upon our life. Our unquestioning obedience to His will and His Word. Mary is told that she will become the mother of a son, but that, that son would be no ordinary child. He will be her son, therefore he will be human, but he will also be the son of the highest. He will be a man, but he will also be God. This was the prophecy of Isaiah. Chapter 7, verse 14. We talked about that last week. This was the message of the angel to Joseph. We talked about that last week. This was the most profound moment 
of all time and eternity when God would enter the womb of this virgin young woman, Mary, take upon flesh and become dependent upon the creature. When Jesus Christ was conceived in the womb of a virgin, the plan of the ages came out of eternity and entered time. You see, this was the plan from before the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, 8, I believe it is, along with other scriptures. God himself robed himself in human flesh, came into this world that he might die on a cross to save his people from their sins. That was the eternal plan of redemption. Mary's told that this child's name would be Jesus. Now this name was a common name in that day. In the Hebrew tongue, the name was Joshua. Joshua Jesus, same name. Many Jewish parents named their sons Joshua, or as the Greeks said it, Jesus. Of course, while that name might be common, the child to whom it was to be given was not common at all. He was extraordinary. The name Jesus means Jehovah is salvation or Jehovah saves. Although Mary did not understand all that was being told her, this child that she would name Jesus would grow up one day to die on the cross of Calvary to save lost sinners from their sins. He will be the only hope that Mankind has for deliverance, for forgiveness, and for salvation. His name will be the only name that will open the gates of heaven, redeem the human soul from the depths of sin, the bondage of sin, deliver lost men from hell, and speak peace and hope to those who previously did not know God who only through Jesus can be made nigh unto God. For this child would be the fulfillment of the plan set in motion long, long, long before. He would die on the cross. He would rise again the third day. And he would ascend back to heaven to guarantee salvation for all who would trust him by faith. Thank God for the day that God sent his son into this world to be the savior of his people, the people who would Come to him by faith. In these verses, we learn the wonderful truth that God will become man. That he'll die for sinners. That he'll rise again to rule forever. All the wonderful truth concerning the life, ministry, and death of Jesus that will be made plain later is revealed in seed form. Here to Mary. The question for you this morning is, do you know him? Do you know Jesus? Or do you just know about him? See, I know you know about him. At least everybody in the room listening, I know you know about him. Because you've heard me preach about him. Now there may be somebody watching on YouTube, maybe that hadn't heard about Jesus. I want you to know he loves you. He did all this for you so that you also could be saved. But I'm asking you today, do you know him personally? Do you have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ? Are you a child of God because of your faith in Jesus? See, we're saved by grace through faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. See, this promise was made to Mary, but it's valid for all who will receive Christ today. Notice verse 34. Another affirmation of her virginity. Then said Mary unto the angel. How shall this be seeing I know not a man? You know the liberal Bible teachers say. Well that's just silly. You know they didn't understand in that day. That all the me mechanics of uh, conception and all of that. And. 
And so they just penned these words and they didn't really understand. Mary was a young woman. She very definitely understood how babies are made. She said, how is this going to be seeing I've never been with a man? I have not known a man in that way. She knew very well how it was traditionally happened. And so she asked the question, how shall these things be seeing I know not a man? She doesn't understand how it's going to take place. She wonders how she'll be able to have a child since she's never physically been with a man. To Mary's mind, this was a dilemma. Thankfully, the angel had the answer. He tells her that she is about to be a part of the greatest miracle the world's ever known. That she's, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon her and she's going to conceive a son who will be the son of God. Listen, it might be more than we can grasp. It might be more than we can understand. But everything God said is true. Jesus is God's Son. Jesus did come into this world to die for you, my friend. And He did that. He died for you. He did rise from the dead. He did return back to heaven. He is coming back to this earth someday. And all those who trust Him by faith will forever be saved by His mighty power. You can be a part of that crowd today if you'll receive Jesus Christ. Cry out to God. Have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I trust your son Jesus to be who He claimed to be that He died for me. He rose again for my justification. He's the Savior that I trust. He'll save your soul. You say, how can I be sure? Well, Mary was given a, 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 a way that she could be sure. In Mary's case, the angel told her about what God had done with her cousin, Elizabeth. Elizabeth was past childbearing years and had been barren all of her younger years. But she's told that Mary, uh, excuse me, Mary is told that Elizabeth has conceived. She is to be given encouragement or confidence that if God can do that for Elizabeth, God can do what he's saying he would do for Mary. And so Mary left immediately to go see Elizabeth. And when she arrived, she found that Elizabeth was pregnant, just like the angel had said. Mary had proof positive that God had worked in Elizabeth's life. And that gave her confidence to believe that he could do what he said in her own womb as well. The proof that Jesus has the power to take a lost sinner, save them by his grace, change their life, can be found by looking around this room. All around are those whose lives have been transformed by his hand of grace. Look what Jesus has done in the lives of those around you and know that what He's done for others He can certainly do for you as well. We could one by one stand up and give a testimony of what we've been delivered from and what we've been delivered unto. You can know that Jesus can save you. You have the assurance of the Word of God that He will save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As we hear about the virgin birth and think about God sending His Son into this world to die for sinners, we might wonder why. Why would He send His only begotten Son into this world? Why would He allow that Son to die for lost people? God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There's only one answer. He loves you, my friend. He loves you. He loves you that much. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. The Bible declares His love. The death of Christ on the cross of Calvary displays His love. The blessed Lamb of God was sent into this world through the womb of the Virgin Mary so that He might be born without sin, live a sinless life, Die on Calvary's cross, a substitute for our sin. 
the innocent for the guilty, just like we saw last week. The question is not really why did God do it. The question is what have you done about it? Have you appropriated His forgiveness in your own life? Have you appropriated the salvation that He purchased for you to your own account? You see, a gift, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But a gift is not does, you, not, does not do you any good until you have received it and accepted it, put it to use in your life. So have you done that? Are you saved? Have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? Do you really know Him or just know about Him? Is there a need for you to come today and receive Jesus by faith and His grace then applied to your life? Have your sins atoned for, taken out of the way, forgiven forever. God prepared the Lamb so that you might be saved. Are you willing to come to Him today? Will you bow with me once again, dear Father, we thank You. We thank You for Your Word. We thank You for Your Son, Jesus. We thank You, Lord, for preparing the perfect, pure place. Pure place through which to bring Your Son into this world that he might be human, but that he also might be God. We thank you for condescending to our level, O oh Jesus. We thank you for dying in our place, rising again, so that we might be justified before God. We thank you, Lord, for removing our sins out of the way and robing us with the righteousness of Christ. I ask you today, take your words. Through your Holy Spirit, convict and draw and save souls. Encourage and thrill your people by your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you stand with me?